a breakdown on one of the beers. Definitely need one tonight with everything happening. And I wanted to actually check out a big one. You know, I was reading a piece a while back and it was talking about people that have beer cellars and how people usually will have those beers last for a good amount of time before they want to drink them. And they're like, the way 2020 is going, why wait any longer? You might as well start drinking some of your good beers. And uh, it actually made pretty damn good sense. So for this one, I'm actually breaking out one of the ones I had there for a bit. This is actually going to be one of the bigger beers I think I've had. It might be the It'll be the biggest one I've done a review on. I can't remember if I had anything bigger at one of the beer festivals. I don't think I have. But this is actually going to be from McKellar, who of course is out of Denmark. And this is going to be a look at their Ferret de Trance, as you can see right here. And this is actually a barley wine, American barley wine style that comes in at an ABV of 19.3%. That's right, 19.3%. It is part of their French Oak Barrel Series uh, Medium Toasted Barley Wine Ale. And according to the information around this one, uh, the French Oak Barrel Series, all of these beers begin with a barley wine aged in French oak barrels. The difference between Ferret Limousine, Ferret De Center, and or for us to say for to center and for it to try say is the level of toasting of the barrel prior to filling so this is the medium toasted one and i guess the other ones are lightly or heavily toasted um on the label itself and on the back side not really anything else really too much just product of belgium uh, of course imported by shelton brothers that handles a lot of their stuff that comes out again here is a deeper look at it so you can see a little farther back what it actually looks like so this will be a nice big one for a saturday night and uh like i said with the way things are happening in 2020 might as well hit some of these other beers as well cheers to lep in the house what is going on my friend good looking video earlier although i, I got into it late we were having dinner so i didn't get to catch the early part uh, i know you didn't cook tonight but shane had those uh, sandwiches looking real nice off the blackstone Make sure you guys check out Leprechaun TV, especially on Saturday nights where they actually uh, do dual and Blackstones usually. There we go. Get that into the glass. And shout out to Erie as well. What is going on? Hopefully your studying is going well as you have your uh, homework you said earlier you had to complete. So hopefully you were able to get that all done or maybe you're doing it right now as you're watching. Always important to get your schoolwork done now. So here is the beer itself. A little lighter shaded than I was expecting. It's kind of got like a reddish brown type tint to it. The head is right now about half a finger. Or it was about a finger when it came out, which is very uncommon for some of the barley wines that they sometimes don't hold as much of a head because of the high ABV. But you look at it there, you got a haziness on it so you can't see through to the other side at all. It's pretty much a cloudier type beer. Aroma wise, you get a sweetness coming out of it. Almost like a toffee type aroma. Feels like it's gonna have a little stickiness in there to the beer. A little bit of kind of a Slight butterscotch type appeal to it, like those old butterscotch candies that were in the orange wrapper. Kind of get that on the nose as well. But heavy sweetness there from the malts. Here you say, got classwork done for the weekend. Been watching live stream on Charleston. Yeah, I was just watching um, live stream from across the country. We got one in Cincinnati right now because we have the protests there too. So I said to get away from a bit. I mean. I almost like want to take a break from America if possible. So <laughs> the way things are going right now. 2020, has there been a year anybody has hated more than 2020? I don't know if there has been. Let's go ahead and get the taste. Ooh. Taste-wise, a little bit of a butterscotch feel in there as well. You get a nice toastiness coming in. 
especially on the aftertaste after you have that swallow it's got like a toasted feel to it a little bit of a woodiness there from the oak you can definitely feel the warmth of the alcohol you definitely getting that heating sensation taking place Again, if you missed it earlier, this is a 19.3% ABV beer. The thing that's getting left behind the most is kind of that heat, that appeal of the flavor, which is like that, that butterscotch and a toastiness around it. Really lingering. I mean, it's got a great duration. It almost has a slight smokiness type of peel to it. But the more I just suck the cheeks, the more it kind of revitalizes the flavor, which I like. So this is definitely one you can take your time with. You can sit it down, have a nice conversation, whatever you're doing, and not feel like you have to get right back into it because the flavors are just going to linger so nicely for you. Shout out to Kyle. No high beer reviews. Cheers, my friend. Good to see you. Yeah, almost 20%. This is 19.3 from a Keller. And Erie said 2020 is a crazy, crazy shitty year for sure. Yeah, I don't I don't know if anybody can hate a year. I mean, for all the stuff that we have, it's only, it's only been five months in. Tomorrow will still be the last of the fifth month, and we still got, you know, seven more months left in the year. So it's just... It's crazy. I should say, what else? Was he seven? Yeah, this will be fifth, so it'll be the sixth month starting uh, Monday. It's got a nice lane of the flavor on the tongue as well. Hey, Richie Z, what is going on? Cheers, my friend. Been a bit. Good to see you, brother. Hopefully, you're having a great Saturday there. So me taking 20 years to drink one makes this the one I need. <laughs> yeah, this one uh, it might knock you back there. I Actually, for American barley wines, for people that are just getting into beer or don't usually have beer enough, I don't usually recommend that style just because it does take, I guess you could say, a palate to be developed over a period of time. It's kind of like if you were just getting into it or not used to it. it might be when it can turn you off in that kind of style but as you enjoy more beers and work your way up to a brownie one i think you enjoy it a little bit more it almost has a little bit of a minty type sensation in there as well it's kind of just like hidden in there. It's almost like a clear, like fresh, slight spearmint or something. Like very light though, but you kind of pick that up. At least I picked that up and tasted the one. It's kind of got like that little bit of a tight feel to it. It's interesting. A little bit of a of medicine type of peel there as well in the swallow but the warmth of the booziness of it you do pick up I'm not getting overly a feel of the booziness but you can definitely feel the sensation of it being there and Richie says he's good is that a French brew this is actually from a Keller so it's actually considered Belgian um, or a product of Belgium with them out of Denmark. It's the French Oak Barrel Series, the Ferret de Trance. You would think I would know how to say that since I took French years ago, but when you don't know French people, you lose it over a period of time. But McKellar always does some unique type beers, and uh, this is one that definitely fits their bill. What's going on, Danny? DIP Outdoors in the house. Cheers, my friend. Hopefully you're doing well, brother. Very unique of a beer. As far as, like for me, well, my untapped... I like breweries that try unique type things. 
And I think with this one, I just think it's kind of got a little bit of a weird quirkiness type, type to it. But I do, I do like it. I don't know if I would have this one again or not, but I think they definitely try something different here. I wouldn't mind trying the other ones to see how the other toastiness comes through. And I usually do like a lot of toastiness when it comes to beers. I don't see where it might be a good amount of people that would actually like this though, just because it is that different. But as far as the crafting of it and the way it's actually put together and the overall appeal to it, I'm gonna give this one a four out of five. I think it just is a very good beer, but you gotta definitely be in that barley wine mindset. You gotta like the toastiness when it comes to beers. Um, and it's just gonna be, I think, a, a unique type thing. But if you like barley wines, I would definitely say check it out. Uh, Richie said, gotcha, must have a bit of a premium price. I can't remember what I paid for this one. Um, I don't know if I got this like on a deal or or what. I don't think it was that much though. Now the bottle itself is 12.7 ounces. I want to say I may have gotten it for maybe $7.99 or something. I can't even remember, but um, anyway, it was a while ago, and I figured I better go to drink it. That way I can actually uh, see how it tastes like. Uh, Kyle, no hugs. I got a bounce, but always a pleasure, my friend. Yes, thanks for swinging by. Make sure you guys check out Kyle over there at No High Beer Reviews. All the good stuff that he's drinking and sharing as well. LOL, if it's that different, I may have to try it. Yeah, nothing wrong with trying everything like that. Um, I don't know if Eclectic is big in the, the Brawley Wines as well, because if he is and you don't like it, you can always pass it to him too. It's just different. It's very unique. Very unique. Uh, not really any herbaceous notes. It's more maltiness with this one. It's more malt up, forward, up front with this um, type of style. So... I don't even think it mentions what hops they may have used in this one. I would say if any of the hop feel that I'm getting out of here is kind of more of a, a floral type uh, appeal. So it's definitely something different on those lines. Uh, Raining, what's going on? It's been a while. Just got done with Lone Pine Dream Team, Double IPA, Lone Pine Rules, as well as Definitive, two best breweries in Maine, or at least the two best that are putting out lots of Double IPAs and Triple IPAs. Nice. Haven't heard about those guys. I mean, I guess they're probably more local. Yeah, I don't know if their distribution gets out of the state or not. Um, Richie says, hot damn, you might have the best beer in America. <laughs> Sorry, Rod. Off topic, LOL. I, I can't grow a beard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's funny. I decided, I mean, at some point, I'm going to have to... I'll, I'll probably shave it back down. I just... Uh, um, don't know what I'm going to do with it at a point. It's kind of like, I don't have to go to the office. Then I'm like, why am I shaving? I don't have to go to the office anymore. So we'll see what happens with it. But right now, I don't think I've shaved it in a bit. I do need to uh, trim it some to get it back down in the form. But we'll see. Uh, Rain is drinking a foundation epiphany now. Nice. And Dee's in the house. What is going on? Sounds like something I would like. What, 799? What the hell is going on, Roger? Let's go back and get you. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what I paid for this one. I just don't remember it being that expensive. Um, it could have even been less than 799. I got one place that's always doing closeouts on stuff, but I think I got that there. It might have been 599 now that I think about it, even. Um, it's just right place, right time sometimes. Now, the beers I did earlier when I did the beer unboxing from the beer hall, none of those were deals at all. Those are just regular price stuff that I got. So, don't always get the deals. But when I do come across them, I do like it. Now, I will say as it does warm up a little bit more now, I do get a little bit more of a boozier feel coming through so the alcohol started to leak through a little bit more but i've had beers with less abv where you've had the alcohol come through stronger than what i'm getting on this one here so i'm enjoying this one this is definitely a nice one to kick back and relax and just chill t 
tell Alan, yes I am, right after I get done here. Is he actually playing right now? Because I was going to send him a message, uh, Erie, to see if he was on yet or about to get on. But yeah, I am going to get on and play a little COD. I need to, I need to, to uh, de-plug from everything. So it's like watching all the stuff that I've been watching, doing stuff that I've been doing on Facebook, sharing different. It's kind of like I feel a little bit overwhelmed at this point. And it's kind of like I do need to take a break away from that stuff. And I tell everybody, like, don't get too caught up on everything that's happening where you start losing your marbles, so to speak. Take a break. We need to take a break. Step away. Some people go on, you know, social media breaks where they're not going to be online for a week or a month or whatever it may be. But whatever it takes to keep your sanity, make sure you guys are definitely still doing that because there's just too much crazy shit here. Like I said, we'll turn a new month in June and that is what's going to probably happen next. Some other crazy shit's going to happen probably in June. So, um, Again, if I tell people, I'm just waiting for Godzilla to show up. Once Godzilla shows up, then I know we're pretty much done in. So, <laughs> But, you know, hopefully we can pull things together before too much shit gets burnt down or whatever you want to say. It's just, uh, it's frustrating on so many different levels, but it is what it is. Um, uh, he says, I sure as hell don't have any sanity left. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pushing people to the edge on stuff. That's for sure. He said, that's why Alan got off for a while. Yeah, me and Alan were messaging earlier back and forth too and sharing some different stuff and it's just a mess right now. So everybody hang in there. Everybody, you know, share with each other. Make sure you show each other you appreciate each other and all that kind of stuff. You just don't know what's going on right now in the world. And uh, it's like my brother down in Georgia, he and his neighbor were talking and um, had a pretty good conversation he was sharing on Facebook and stuff. So it's, uh, you know, you may need to check in on each other, make sure everybody's doing okay. I agree, Richie. Let's hope for a great June. It's been odd and settling for me at least a couple of months for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Richie. I appreciate that. You know, we get on here, we do the lives. I like to share the beer. Obviously, I love the beer. I love talking about the beer and sharing it with you. Um, the other channel I started, the Hip Hop Chronicles, some people are liking that as well. So that's I'm doing uploads on that channel, by the way, for those of you who are watching. That's every Tuesday night. It'll be about 8.15. I'm trying to get those to stay on that course. So tomorrow I'll be building a new video for this upcoming week and... People are kind of liking some of the stuff there. I'm thinking about doing another channel that might be more around social media tips and tricks. I just haven't put that together yet. But, you know, being coming in and spending time with you guys is always awesome. So I always appreciate you guys being here and being able to share some of the stuff. But, you know, beer and or this music, social media, whatever it is, it's just always fun. It's always good to... Find an outlet, right? If you're doing YouTube, for a lot of us to do YouTube, it's a nice outlet that we have to get away from the world. If it's not YouTube, maybe it's painting, maybe it's writing, you know, maybe it's singing. Find out what, you know, your outlet is and make sure you do it and address it. That's going to be a key thing for you keeping your sanity as well because there's enough shit in the world right now to kind of pull everything away from that and take that with it. So you want to protect your sanity and make sure you're good to go. Um... Richie says, thank you, thank you, and uh, you give us great ideas for trying a ton of new beers. Well, yeah, well, I definitely like that. I like to make sure you guys experiment. It's funny. I, mean, I always get, I always like laugh a little bit when someone says, well, I don't like beer, and it's kind of like, well, what kind of beers have you had? Because most people have just had, like, kind of the macros, and we start breaking things down and sharing stuff with people. They end up finding they do like some beers. It's just different styles they may not have. My wife used to be the same way where she was not... A big beer drinker and through knowing her palate and finding out stuff she likes she found out she really likes whip beers she likes whip beers and she likes um some of the different types of lagers that are out there she won't do any hoppy no bitterness none of that type stuff occasionally she'll do sours but her sweet spot is really whip beers and then uh, some of the pilsners so you know you gotta experiment with it you have fun with it it's like anything everyone keep hanging there definitely richie for sure Erie says crocheting, right? So Erie does her crocheting all the time, and that keeps her sanity. So you got to take a break from stuff, and don't get 
too hooked into, you know, social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff, plus the news and it think you gotta step away at times and clear your head for sure. <laughs> so make sure you guys are definitely doing that. I love and appreciate all of you. So I just want to make sure you guys are all in a safe space too. Richie said he discovered he liked sours this year, right? So, you know, you're experimenting, you say, Well, let me try this or let me try that and you're like, okay, I can get down with this one. So that's awesome. Um, here he says, I try Alice beers. I just think he has a crappy taste. <laughs> well, hopefully Alice trying to share some beers to kind of match your palate as well, Erie. So, you know, if he's asking you, like, what do you usually like about beers? He can try to pick up those beers when he goes shopping. That's what I did with my wife. I find out what she kind of likes and... The types of food she likes, because if you know the type of food she likes, you know what kind of beer you can pair with uh, that food as well. And that gives you an idea of what to kind of do. So, uh, Dee Dee says, Rod, do I have to wear my Ray-Bans when I watch the hip-hop channel? I have to pull on my X cap <laughs> You could. You can. Know, I did the trailer. I did the trailer. I had my sunglasses on because, you know, back in the day when I DJed and did all that kind of stuff, it was all about that, that fashion or whatever. So... Yeah, I mean, the first couple videos, I think we, the first video I did was the one with Cool Herc. You can see he has the glasses on. So, so you know, it's whatever you feel comfortable in. And hopefully you enjoy it when you watch it. And it gives you some flashbacks if you were kind of into some of the... I know some of the guys that commented on there brought back some memories for them on some of the stuff. This week, I haven't fully decided yet if it's going to be a music video on that one. I'm going to kind of get into or another breakdown. The first two videos, the first one I did was kind of a perspective on Cool Herc, who's seen as the forefather of hip-hop. And the last one I did was kind of on craft work and their presence in hip-hop. Um, not sure the next one, because there's a couple of videos I want to kind of dissect and do stuff to. There's also some other people I want to get on there to um, kind of talk about them and their influence on stuff too. So it's kind of shifting this week with all the stuff that's happened. There's kind of things that jumped in my head about some of the old music back then, how they were talking about the same issues we face today. So I might do a breakdown of one of those songs or something. So I'll have to decide something by tomorrow, but I can guarantee it should be something entertaining this Tuesday night when I actually uh, do that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Rich said, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Erie said, no peace too selfish. <laughs> Come on, share the love. Uh, Amazon right now, what's going on, brother? I'm going to jump on COD when I'm done here in a, in a couple minutes. But uh, he said, shit is getting crazy in Charleston. again. Yeah, he said, me and you were talking earlier and things were peaceful then. But it's, it gets to that nighttime and something ends up happening. I was just watching some of the stuff in uh, Chicago, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Minneapolis. And... It's getting worse as it gets dark, and it's like, it's getting crazy. I, I, I don't know if you saw Alan, I posted something on Facebook where one of the people, it wasn't a cop or anybody affiliated, but it was like a regular person started shooting, a, he tried to shoot a long, long bow into the crowd, and the crowd took him down, uh, but he did shoot one guy, I think, um, so hopefully that guy is okay, but shit is getting bananas out there. It's, uh... You know, if you're out there and you're voicing concerns, just make sure you're careful out there and know who's around you. If you do go to the protests, obviously, you know, you, you have that First Amendment right to protest stuff happening. But also be because there's shady people in these crowds out there for what I'm seeing. So if you are out there, make sure you're watching your back or you're there with someone that's watching your back. And you guys are watching together or something. Um, Alan said, what's up to Richie? And doing well. Says hope he was well as well. Uh, I have my Technique 1200 hooked up to my sound card, and I play my vinyl I purchased in '86 in Germany. I actually have a turntable downstairs with the uh, USB on it. That because um, I still got three bins of like old school records down there, and uh, that might be one of the episodes where I go through the record collection I have in the basement um, to show you guys that um, some of the stuff there from some of the old things and. You know, hip-hop was kind of like, they started coming out with those 12-inch singles. It was kind of something that, you know, you had the old 45s where it might be a, fr a front and back piece, but the 12-inch, the remixes, the different instrumentals, I mean, a lot of that stuff was more just hip-hop being done, where people were just coming up with different versions of songs. Uh, I'm going to jump on some COD, too. Erie said, uh-oh, watch out now. <laughs> 
Yeah, shooting longbow. Yeah, look at my Facebook. It was TMZ just shared it about 30 or 40 minutes ago, I think. And it's just crazy. Um, I protest from afar from the house to avoid becoming more of the problem. I have stuff plus whiskey and brew and joy. Yeah, so, yeah, to be here and kind of doing that as well. I went downtown earlier today. I was going to try to pick up um, a prescription I had and stop by the drugstore. And unfortunately, our drugstore... Um, last night people did I guess I don't think they looted it but I think it took some bricks through the window they had it boarded up and so it was closed and that kind of sucked but at the same point it's kind of like for me it's a weird type situation so it's kind of like I understand the frustration and stuff and I have other means where I can get what I need but I feel like for the people that may not be able to do that and they can only go to that one spot for them it really hurts them a lot more so we just got to find a way to make everything better than what it is um many different things have been tried and we're still in the same spot for the most part that we have been in the past and it's like how do you get over the hump it's just that's that's the uh that's the dilemma we're in right now what's going on bounty cheers my friend what has happened and bounty by observation in the house and uh you can check out his stuff. Does he does some great fun live streams as well? He had one earlier. I didn't get a chance to chat on it, but I saw you were on there and miscellaneous and a few other people. So uh, great fun channel to check out. And uh, swing by and see what he's up to. But that being said, speaking of checking out, I'm going to go ahead and check out of here. Thanks for everybody that tuned in. Um, this was actually going to be just a little review. We got into a little bit of a chat, which is always great because I always love chatting with you guys. I'd like to maybe try to do a Sunday Sunday stream tomorrow. So if I can get some guys that want to put something together, maybe we can do like a, uh, a slow it down Sunday just so we can all get a break away from some of the shit that's happening and kick back and relax. So hopefully tomorrow afternoon I can put something together for that. Excuse me. And if you guys are around, you can definitely check in. And we'll have some good conversation. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, cheers to everybody. You guys stay safe. Remember, you know, with all the other stuff with the COVID, everything's kind of falling off the COVID radar now with everything happening here. But remember to be safe out there for that as well. And hopefully you guys have a great remaining Saturday night. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thanks for swinging by. Keep drinking those good craft beers. And remember, there's always time. Get your beer on.